It's just like a final update of the uh, area that I'm fencing in around my raised beds and some of the final things that I'm finishing up. Um, I pulled out those bee whirly gigs I made last year and found out that they had a, a lot of delamination in the plywood. I thought I did use interior plywood and I put many coats of paint on on them thinking it would seal it but turns out it didn't so um i just used some epoxy to kind of patch them back up for this year and um, hopefully next year i can find some of that plastic wood and maybe you know run the bodies out of that quickly and um you know redo them just change the wings over so you know basically um i get them patched up and then i wanted to make the wings a little bit bigger because um i made them a little small because of the high winds that we have in the area that i live in uh, figuring that they might be spinning out of control if i made them too big so i started out with them smaller and then i you know had always planned on putting some uh, plastic overlays on them like this so what i did is i you know quick drew some up and then i programmed it and um here i am just kind of running it on my cnc router um it's a good machine for you know whenever you want to make multiples of anything it allows you to uh just kind of you know draw one up and then just uh repeat the the same thing over and over again fairly easy so i need 32 of these to um update the eight b's and um I'm able to get eight of them on each sheet of plastic that I have, so in the end I'll have 32 of them that I need. So this is, you know, just a matter of watching the machine do its thing here and cut them all out for you. It doesn't take too long doing it this way. I mean, you could do them by hand and cut them out on a, a jigsaw or something like that, but... Uh, this is a lot easier for me. So there's the first eight of them cut out of the uh, the one sheet of plastic, and you know when you're done, it's real real easy. The uh, double-sided tape that I stuck it down with sort of holds everything together while you're machining it and working on it, and you just have to you know pry it up off there and you know get a get it away from the sticky side of the tape and kind of remove all the parts. Um, and try to get the old tape off so I can, you know, get ready to load another sheet on there. Which, you know, there's another sheet that I'm um, running the next eight of them. So this is, um, you know, a real easy way to make parts if you have to make a bunch of parts. And um, it was something I feel was really worth building. It, um, you know, it really didn't cost me that much to build and it really does a good job. So I'm happy with it. So there's another sheet all done, um, you know, parts are all run and they just pop out. Um, the plastic, it's just one sixteenth of an inch thick Lexan that I have. Um, and the plastic comes with a protective sheet on both sides of it. So when, once you machine it, you can go back and just pull that, that sheet off and um, it really helps protect it while, you know, you're working with it and stuff so it doesn't get damaged and you still have a nice clear piece of plastic when you get done so, you know there's what one of the wings look like and I just have to peel all the protective stuff off and then there's some little fuzz around the edge that I just take a utility knife and go back and just you know scrape that right off that comes off real easy there's there's the first batch up and I'm you know here I'm getting ready to mount them onto the uh, B and I'm going to use these little pop rivets that I have. They're pretty lightweight and easy to use. And first one I tried just drilling through the holes that I put in the uh, the wing and um, you know holding it up there. But in the end, I wound up taking them apart to do it. And I did put a little bit oversized hole in the plastic so that just in case there's some expansion and contraction, it you know it shouldn't crack the plastic. So, you know, once I drilled a couple holes, it was just a matter of uh, using this little gun to squeeze the pop rivets and, um, you know, get that attached on there. So there's the first one attached to the uh, B, and, and then this is just going back to the um, the removable side ones and just pop riveting them in place also. So here I got the, um, you know, basically getting the first one done and 
And I just decided to try it in front of a fan on about a medium speed there just to see, you know, make sure that would work in a lower wind. And, yep, sure enough, it works pretty good. So that's, you know, exactly what I was looking for. And just a matter now of going back to the other seven of them and updating them. Now, my wife was always complaining that I'd always leave the little hand tools laying around and she could never find them. So I figured I'd try to solve that problem with a uh, mailbox. I'm going to just mount a mailbox out there for the tools that we commonly use and took some of the post cutoffs that I had left over and just made a little bracket that I could um, put on the fence post out there and mount the mailbox on and, you know, have a place to keep the tools so that we'll be able to find them. But in the meantime, 5 o'clock the next morning, uh, awakened by flashing lights outside our house. And uh, you can see a deer laying in the road there. It looks like one of the deer that had been around our garden decided to run out in front of that truck and smash up the other side of the truck pretty good. And um, So that's one less deer we have to worry about now. And then I got some, uh, some old five-quarters deck boards that I had and just started cutting them up and... I had to drill a hole in them for some solar lights that I was going to mount. So I just used one of these uh, spade bits. And the reason I used that was the uh, the solar light had a weird size uh, mounting pole on it. Um, so what I was able to do was take a little bit oversized bit and then just grind it on the belt sander to uh, get the right size hole that I needed. So it'd have a, you know, a nice snug fit on the solar light. You just have to make sure that you uh, mark them after you do that to it so you know it's undersized the next time you go to use it. And I picked up some solar lights at uh, Walmart. They were on clearance there. So um, I got the holes that, you know, fit them real nice now and nice tight fit there. And lights are really nice. I was surprised. Um, they have a glass shade on them and they also have a, um, like a, let's see, a third. 3000k collar to them that um 30k collar that uh you know with more of a yellowish collar that's a nice light at night so there i am just taking that protective cover off my saw so i can uh, go back and start tapering the tops there and that's a pretty easy job just to, you know set up that little jig there and just clamp the the top on it so that you don't have to worry about anything flying or getting too close to it with your hands and you know just loosen it up turn it cut flip it and cut and it didn't take too long to get the um the tops all tapered like that to give them a little bit nicer look and um then i cut down the shafts from the light and actually i drilled a hole and um now I'm just putting a tack in to retain the uh, that shaft into the top cover there so it won't, you know, come up, slide out or anything. So, you know, it's just a simple, simple tack to drive in there and holds everything together real good and real snug. That's kind of what I'm going to mount the lights on. And then I needed something to drop down over the post, so I just ripped up a couple more pieces of the pressure treated and mitered the corners and here I am just kind of starting to glue them up I took the four pieces and um, put masking tape on them and then just put a little bit of glue on them and the masking tape held everything in line so you can just you know take it fold it up and you know everything nice and square and then I just uh, clamp it in place in that clamp board that I made and you know that that's it for a little while so then, uh, you know, once they start drying, I'm just putting them onto the bottom of the uh, cap where they put a little bit of glue on them. And then I'm just using some of those 18-gauge uh, narrow crown staples to hold them in place. And I just wanted this little lip so it would sit down over the uh, top of the post. So, you know, there's the first ba first two. And then I had another five I had to finish up. And they'll just drop down over the post. I had cut the posts off with a chainsaw so they weren't perfectly square or flat or anything. So, you know, this will give me a little bit of adjustment when I drop them on there. So next it was outside to mount them. And, you know, they just slipped over the top of the 
each of the posts and you know slid down on and then I just kind of held them so that they were you know level and plumb looking and just went back and tightened up those four screws from uh, you know there's one screw on each side there coming in and that allowed me to get them pretty you know pretty nice and level on the posts that weren't perfectly cut flat and level so I just took a couple minutes to um, screw them all on and there's the the first one basically done and then I had to go back and do the other six of them so you know there you can see there hopefully they'll you know spook the animals a little bit at night but I don't know I'll find out just trying something different and um, so the other thing I did is I you know made the first gate here and that's just some simple pressure treated wood and I used some of those spring loaded screen door hinges to close it and then just a simple gate latch but my wife couldn't reach it from the inside so I had to um, put a little extension on it so that you can just you know pull it from the top there to open and close it so that worked out pretty good and now it's time to put the bees back on now I had put those post caps on last year with the uh, you know the bee mounting on them so that was just an easy matter of you know just slipping them down over each of the uh, the shafts sticking up there and you can see they you know did start turning pretty easily in the wind so um, I'm happy with that little those little plastic additions on them and then when the wind kicked up they really started going so hopefully um, that little glare coming off of them I think might help keep some of the animals away too but you know, time will tell, and I'll find out if, you know, any of these ideas do work, so. Now, next week, I'll probably do an update on all the, you know, the different plants I have growing and how they're doing and everything. Um, you know, just to give you a little bit of an idea, and um, pretty much I'm all done with the fence, except for I have, you know, one more gate down at that far corner. I have to pick up some materials to do. Here's how that little latch works from the inside. You can see, you just pull it up with your finger. So now it's time to mount my uh, mailbox slash toolbox and drill in some holes for some lag bolts to put it in. And I'm hoping that this will help us keep track of the tools and spend less time looking for them because, um, you know, my wife's never too too happy when she's got to spend 20 minutes trying to find a little trowel or something out there because I left it laying in uh, one of the beds somewhere or, you know, in the over in the other garden or I had left it in my pocket and brought it up in the house so hoping this will help solve that problem so you know it's just a couple of screws from the outside there I'm putting into um, to mount it just a pretty simple thing to do and then uh, what I did is I had drilled those holes through and I came back come in from the back side with some real long lag bolts but the problem is I didn't realize is instead of pulling it in the um, just about when they were tight there the uh, the head the impact wrench driver was strong enough that I snapped the heads off just under the uh, surface and I couldn't really pull everything together but it's together firmly I mean I may have to try to get that little gap out of there someday so the box you just drops down on top of the uh, mounting boards there a couple of screws and you know that's all mounted and you're ready to try out and you know give it a give it a go see if it does help us out so um you know basically i went up and got a couple of the tools that we're going to keep in there and you know a little trowel and she wanted a pair of gloves in there and you know a couple another little shovel and a little weeder and a couple things of string for tying up tomatoes And then she uh, made up this rule that when you take something out of the box, you put the flag up. And before you leave the garden, you make sure that you put everything back in it. And then you put the flag down to let you know, you know, everything's been put away and, you know, it's where it belongs. So um, there's one of my first sunflowers that just started opening up today. And um, pretty soon, you know, there'll be more coming behind there. And can see uh, wherever I didn't get mulch I've got a lot of weeding to do and stuff but um, you know so I just thought I'd uh, 
I'd follow up and just, you know, show you these final little things that I'm doing around the uh, the fence here to, to finish that up. And um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.